Welcome everyone to Dr. Saying Stuff, the place where we answer some very common medical questions that you all have. We dive into the topics, we bring in experts, and we go from there. Today, we're talking about something that is an epidemic that is not talked about nearly enough. That's possibly because a lot of people don't understand it. We're talking about metabolic syndrome. We're bringing in an expert to talk about one specific aspect, insulin resistance. We have joining us Dr. Rocio Salas, who is board certified in both endocrinology and obesity medicine and the owner of New York Endocrinology. Dr. Salas, thank you so much for being here to talk to us about this incredibly important topic. Dr. Salas, we hear the words insulin, we hear the words resistance, and we all know individually what those words mean. But when you hear insulin resistance, what comes to mind? What is it? Insulin resistance in simple terms means that your cells stop responding to insulin in a way that it was responding before. Meaning that every time your body needs to make more and more insulin to have the same effect that it did before. Dr. Salas, what are the top three symptoms that patients should look out for that may signify insulin resistance? Three common symptoms that we see in insulin resistance are excess hunger, darkening of the skin, especially behind the neck, under the armpits and in the groin, and also fatigue is another common symptom in insulin resistance. Alok and I work a lot of inpatient, and I don't know what it's like being a pediatric hospitalist, but I know what it's like being a pulmonary critical care physician. And in the ICU, I've been having to give massive amounts of insulin more and more to patients over the course of my career. Is this secondary to this insulin resistance and this metabolic syndrome? And what pathophysiologically is actually happening to the body? Yes, definitely we are seeing higher amounts of insulin needed either inpatient and even outpatient too in people with diabetes and this applies for people with type 2 diabetes and even type 1 diabetes and yes this is due to insulin resistance so our body needs insulin based on our body weight so the amount of insulin needed to have an effect is weight based meaning higher body weight then you need more insulin lower body weight, then you need less amount of insulin. So due to obesity that is so prevalent, we are seeing a higher amount of insulin needed to have an effect on the glucose control. Dr. Salas, what are you seeing in children? Is insulin resistance a common problem in the pediatric population? What's happening currently? We are seeing insulin resistance in children and adolescents. And this is due to also the high incidence of obesity in children and adolescents that we're seeing. And those numbers are just going even higher now. Whenever we talk about kids, I get a little bit nervous, a little bit scared, you know, since being a parent, just like a loke, and I'm just like you. So what is the typical treatment for insulin resistance? And what do you think is the best treatment? Maintaining a normal and healthy body weight is key. Obesity leads to more insulin resistance. Insulin resistance leads to increasing visceral fat. Increasing visceral fat increases insulin resistance, so it becomes a vicious cycle. Other things that people can do is to avoid refined sugars, processed food and ultra processed food that this can lead to insulin resistance. Maintaining a healthy lean mass, meaning muscle, meaning Exercising, resistance training, resistance training and strength training is key to avoid insulin resistance. The more muscle, the less insulin resistant because muscle increases insulin sensitivity. In terms of addressing insulin resistance, what can your colleagues do better? What can we healthcare professionals like pediatricians and internal medicine specialists do to help? I think the first thing that we all have to do is to have the conversation with our patient, right? If we know that the patient has obesity, is overweight, uh, if we measure their waist circumference, and we know that this, all the clinical signs and symptoms are there about insulin resistance, the first step to do is to have the discussion and educate our patients regarding insulin resistance. Always being more proactive than having to treat all the consequences of insulin resistance, having a discussion about healthy eating, 
right? Having a discussion about physical activity, resistance training, things that we can help our patient to avoid the consequences of insulin resistance is key. And again, everybody in healthcare will encounter somebody who has insulin resistance. You know, I've, I've often wondered if dietary changes can be helpful. And when you think about nutrition in general, what advice would you give to patients that have insulin resistance in regards to nutrition? And do you think it would be helpful? Definitely. I think the biggest message that I want to send out there is that maintaining a healthy weight, maintaining a healthy muscle mass is very important to avoid insulin resistance. And if once already the person has insulin resistance, again, going back to a healthy eating and physical activity can improve and treat insulin resistant. Insulin resistant leads to diabetes. Insulin resistant leads to needing more insulin even if they have type 1 diabetes. Insulin resistant leads to metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease. It's a very early stage for all of these problems. So if we treat it early, if we prevent it early, we can avoid all the other complications. Thank you everyone for joining us on another episode of Doctors Saying Stuff. This is the place where we try to present you with medical information in an accessible, energetic, hopefully fun kind of way so you can do better at being a better you. We will see you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, do everything.